Lamu has been working in this tea house for four years. The process is simple. Mix milk and sugar with black tea. The flavor attracts streams of customers. Lamu and her co-workers get up at six every morning. The tea house opens two hours later and stays open till 10 at night. There's always a crowd. Sweet tea is a big hit with Tibetans. In recent years, shops like this one have opened all over Lhasa. This tea house is a few minutes' walk from the famous Jokang Temple, sacred to the Buddhists from all over Tibet. The first customers of the day have just finished morning worship. Most Tibetans are used to sweet tea. They drink yak butter tea after getting up in the morning. Afterwards, they have to drink some sweet tea. They are not happy if they don't. <laughs> sweet tea was originally made with black tea from India. As Tibetans develop a taste for it, they look for something closer to home. Most of our tea is from Yunnan, good quality and good taste. Powdered milk is from Shanxi, sugar from Guangxi, good quality. Tibetans love tea. This monument in front of the Zhoukang Temple symbolizes friendship between the Tubo and Tang dynasty. Legend has it, tea came to Tibet when the Tubo ruler of 1500 years ago married the Tang dynasty princess Wenchang. Tibetans cannot go without tea for a single day. Beef and lamb and yak butter tea are a way of life. Tibetans love drinking tea very much. Wherever Tibetans go, we take tea with us. For example, when we go to the mountains, farm fields, or pick mushrooms, you can see Tibetan tea culture everywhere. A small tea shop like this one sells 15 to 20 tons of tea a year. Unlike the black tea used in the sweet tea houses, this processed into bricks. Brick tea is also called Tibetan tea. Yet, Tibet grows very little tea due to its high altitude. The tea got its name because it's specially processed for Tibetans in the nearby provinces, mainly Sichuan. Our tea is from the Friendship Tea Factory in the city of Yang'an, Sichuan province. We have been doing tea business for quite a few years. There are many old customers and sales are good. Both locals and farmers and herdsmen from rural areas come for our tea. They like the three-leaf label. The official name of the brick tea is tea for the border regions, which dates back several hundred years. For thousands of years between the Tibetan and Han people, tea has served as a medium, a commodity, and a daily necessity. It has never gone out of circulation. It's a glorious history that our ancestors crossed high mountains and harsh waters to trade tea for other products. From another perspective, tea as a culture Tea as a trade has promoted the communication and harmony between the Tibetan and Han people.
，也促进了藏汉文化的交流，促进了藏汉和其他民族之间的民族关系的融合。Fifty-six million tons of such tea was sold in Tibet last year. If you take into consideration the population is three million, that's enough for over eighteen tons for every Tibetan. Tibet's tea market is very stable and growing every year. So many people come to Tibet. Some like the yak butter tea and like our brick tea. Tibet's population is also growing. That's why the tea market here has very good prospects. In one of the well-known downtown streets in Lhasa, you can find dozens of tea shops. They sell neither brick tea nor black tea, but a variety of choices from other provinces. These shops have expanded the market with new varieties, better quality, higher prices, and the art of tea appreciation. Liu Ling has been in the tea business in Tibet for more than a decade. She now runs this shop whose owner is in Anhui province, thousands of kilometers away. The tea shop is one of the largest in Lhasa. It offers a variety of choices. Prices are much higher, and she also gives demonstration for the true connoisseur. We used to sell jasmine tea, packed, 20 or 30 yuan each. When I first came, purchasing power was low. Now people drink expensive tea, 7 to 8 thousand yuan per 500 grams. In general, Purchasing power has increased, and appreciation and taste for tea has increased. A few minutes' walk from Liu Ling's shop is a new tea house catering to high-end customers. Its name, Yushan, refers to the highest mountain in Taiwan. It offers tea, tea sets, and tea service with a Taiwan flavor. The owner, dressed in a Tibetan costume, speaks perfect Tibetan. She's a Buddhist from Taiwan who came to Lhasa a few years ago to study the language. Buddhism is her faith, tea and coffee her hobby. The burgeoning tea market in Lhasa has helped her pursue both. I've observed the tea market in Lhasa. Field tea houses offer the art of drinking tea. There is great potential. Not many customers have a taste for this, but they have potential. It's a small market. Most businessmen go for high profits. But if I can promote tea culture from Taiwan here, I'll be much happier. Traditional sweet tea houses and brick tea shops in the old town. Thriving tea houses with a variety of choices and high-end establishments. The changing tea market reflects a changing lifestyle. Lhasa is becoming a showcase of tea culture, where different parts of China come together to enjoy a flavorful cup. <laughs>